Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're in the series called It's Go Time. It's what it is for us as the church. It's time to go make disciples. Time to be a witness. It's time to let the world know who Jesus is until the day he comes again in glory. And today it's we're going to talk about this. It's time to live with resolve. That is with firm determination in our commitment to Jesus and living for him. So get ready for a powerful message. If you have your Bibles, look up Joshua 24, verses 14 to 18, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Also, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 to 28, and John chapter 6, verse 60 to 69. Powerful scripture that all fits together. So check it out. It's go time, and I've been telling people, it's been go time for a long time. Ever since the day of Pentecost, it was, it's go We are on a mission. Everything about our life after we come to Jesus is now go. It's learning, preparing, getting ready. And it's wherever we go, as we go, there's somebody's name that needs to be lifted up by the way we live, the words we say, so that people come to him. So we've been in the series a while, but there's more to go because there's things we need to learn so that when we go, we are really equipped and ready and understand how that can be. Well, today it's this. It's time to live with resolve. Last week I was talking English, meaning active present participles, you know, things like that. Well, I'm starting with a definition. That's English. What does this word mean, resolve? Resolve means this. It means to decide firmly on a course of action. I'm resolving to go this way and not that way. And it's also to have a firm determination to do something. I am going to lose weight. I resolve it's January 1. This is what I'm going to do. So what I mean today by this is this. It's time to live resolute in our commitment to Christ. Resolute with resolve. Firmly convinced and determined in the way we follow him and doing everything we can to live for him and his kingdom purposes. It's time to live with resolve, to live resolute, to be fully determined, convinced that this is what I need to do. It's really to live the way Paul says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I don't often do the King James, but this is kind of how it goes. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and unmovable. What does that mean, steadfast and unmovable? It means live with resolve. Resolve to do this. I'm going to be steadfast. I'm not moving any other way. I'm going to be unmovable in the direction I'm going. It's, this is it. Be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For you, King Jesus, for you know it's going to happen and that it's worth it, that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It's going to do great stuff. You're going to watch God show up and show off. You're going to be in the middle of his will. And you're going to experience a life that is beyond what you can comprehend. It's what Moses resolved to do with his life. He could have lived an easy life in Pharaoh's household the rest of his days. But he chose instead to live for God and God's plan for his life. Hebrews 11 says it this way. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He could have said, I got it made. (laughs) You know, I'm in Pharaoh's household. We got all the goods. We got all the fun. We got all the games. We can just have a ball and stay here. And too bad for you all. Maybe someone should have put you in a reed basket and thrown you in the river. And maybe you could have been where I am. But he chose not to live that way. He refused to live that way. He chose to be mistreated along with God's people rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. 
He said, I know what that does and where it goes and where it ends. It's, it's not good. He chose disgrace. That's what he chose. To be mistreated rather than live that other way. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking forward to his reward. I love this because the writer of the book of Hebrews puts Christ all the way back in Exodus. Do you see that? That Moses knew this is what it was all about. It's about God's plan, about a Savior who was to come. And even back then, he chose disgrace for the name of Christ rather than to live a different way and go for the treasures of Egypt. And now let me think. Who was it with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration? Moses. See? He knew it back then. He was living for someone greater He's there on the mountain talking with Christ who is enough as he gets ready for the sacrifice that changes everything. When confronted with two options, Moses resolved to live for God and him alone no matter the cost. When confronted with two options, it's really what life's all about. It's two options. It's his way or another way. It's living in light or living in darkness. It's living free or living in bondage. It's following after him or something else. Keep that in mind as we keep going. Confronted with two options. It was the same for the Israelites when they entered into the promised land and finally were settling in. Joshua, he pulled all the people together, all the leaders and all the tribes and all the people and all the judges, and he called them all together. And he urged them to live with resolve, to live for the Lord and to serve him only. And so he says, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. What does all faithfulness mean? Steadfast and unmovable. It means living with resolve. It's determined to live his way in everything, not in just some things. With all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors who they worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. He said, you can't do that way and go this way. But he said, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, if you think it's not such a good idea, if it doesn't look too good to your eyes, then choose this day. Choose for yourself whom you'll serve. Whether you're going to serve them, the God that your ancestors worship in Egypt, or the Amorites who are around you now, or the Lord. You have two options. This way or that way. Joshua says, but as for me and my house, there's only one way. We're going to serve the Lord. You see, we're resolute in our commitment to him. And what did the people say? They said, so are we. They said, far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. That would be crazy. Why in the world would we forsake the Lord to serve other gods? Far be it from us that, that we should ever do that. Because it was the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt. We were slaves. We had a miserable life. God brought us out of there. 
He rescued us with his mighty hand and outstretched arm. Why would we forsake the Lord? Far be it from us after all he did to rescue us. And not only that, but he also performed great miracles along the way. He divided the Red Sea. He destroyed the Egyptian army. He fed us with manna. He fed us with water out of a rock. He fed us quail. He did all kinds of miracles along the way. And not only that, he protected us on the journey. None of the armies coming against us could touch us. And he drove out all the nations before us to give us this wonderful land. After all that God has done for us, far be it from us that we would serve any other God and be committed to anything else but to him. They said, we too. We will serve the Lord because he is our God. But here's the deal. That resolve didn't last very long. How many of you ever read the book of Judges? It's this cycle after cycle after cycle. They lived this predictable pattern that so many people live today. They resolve to live for the Lord, and then they fall away for the other gods. They get in trouble. They cry out to the Lord, help me, help me, help me, and God shows up and he delivers them. And they resolve to live for him all over again, and then before very long, they repeat the process over and over and over again. It's where they were in 1 Kings chapter 18 when Elijah has a showdown with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. They were following the wrong gods. So he says, let's see who the real God is. Let's, let's have a challenge with the prophets of Baal versus the true God. And so this is what he tells the people. How long will you waver between two opinions? There's only two options. How long are you going to go back and forth in who is God? If the Lord is God, then serve him. If Baal is God, then serve him. We'll see. But you can't have it both ways. You have to resolve to live one way or the other. And I want you to know that's what resolve does. It gets us out of being lukewarm. Lukewarm means you're neither hot nor you're cold. You're, you're in between the two. You're going back and forth and you really got nothing good going on. It gets us out of wavering between two opinions. It gets us to make a commitment to go one way or the other. And that's really where the disciples were in John chapter 6. They're at a crossroads between two opinions. To follow Christ or not. And what you need to know is John is calling everybody in the story a disciple. He calls them a disciple because they were following Jesus. They were following Jesus after they heard him speak and saw the miracle of how he fed them with the loaves. They followed from where that event happened all the way across to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. They made a journey. They kept following Jesus. And they wanted more. And that's what a disciple is, is a follower. I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. So when those following Jesus heard him say, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you because my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Many disciples started grumbling and Jesus heard it. They didn't like it. They didn't like what he said. They didn't really understand it, but they really didn't like what it sounded like. They didn't, they didn't like how the kingdom was going to work and what this might mean when it means to follow Jesus. I don't know if I can do that or I want to do that. They were grumbling. They said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? The impression is they didn't even want to learn. Jesus says, does this offend you? What if you see and experience something that really blows your mind? 
like you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before. Because when you follow me, you're going to see all kinds of things that you may not like either. And then he gets to the point. He says there's really two, only two options. The Spirit gives life. That's one option. The flesh counts for nothing. That's the other. And the words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. And yet some of you do not believe. You're just following. Some of them may be just following the people in front of them. You know what you call that? Lemmings. Everybody knows it's there. Nancy got it. You guys are really slow this morning. But they're just following to follow. Others said, hey, this could be a really easy life. We could just follow him, not have to work. He's going to give us food for free, and life's going to be great. Fish, it's, what else could we ask for? And he's going to teach us some things. It, it doesn't sound too bad. Kind of like living in Pharaoh's household. They're just, the servants are just going to bring the food. What do people want? Free food and free money. Why do they want the free money? So they can get the free food. And eat it wherever they want to eat it and do these things. See, it's the easy life. They're following because they thought it was going to be easy. In the song we just sang, Christ is Enough, is the impression in all of that there's no turning back. The cross is before me. The world behind me is still going to be suffering in following Jesus. There are going to be hard times, things I'll struggle with, but it's worth it. And that's why it takes determination, because if I don't have that commitment, like in marriage, I'll give in. I'll give up. I won't make it to the end. There's only two options. You're following, he says, but you really don't believe. There's no resolve in you. There's no commitment. Here's the saddest probably verse in Scripture. Many disciples turned back and no longer followed him. I said, uh, this is as far as I go. Now it's getting tough. It's not what I bought was bought. I thought I was buying into. I'm going back to my old way of life. I think it's going to be better. So sad. They saw the miracles. They heard the teaching. Jesus was right there. But they turned back. I want you to notice one thing. Jesus didn't run after them. You know why? It would cheapen what he said. And what the kingdom is really all about. And I said, oh no. Oh no. I got to have you. You really don't have to have any commitment at all. I'll just make it easy for you. As long as, because I need you so bad. He doesn't need us. He, he told me one time, John, I don't need you. I want you. That's why I came. I want you. I want you to spend time. I want you to know me and love me. I, I, I want this committed life and relationship with you where you love me with all your heart and you want what I want. I want to bless you and use you and take you places you never dream possible. That's why Jesus didn't run after him and say, oh no. Another thing the Lord told me is he's, he said, John, I'm not impressed with numbers because I'm looking at hearts. Who really wants me? Who really loves me? That's what I come for, to have this life, not just numbers. And so the rest leave, and the 12 are there, the ones that we call disciples. And Jesus turns to them and says, what about you? What are you going to do? Do you want to leave too? And I love it because 
Simon is the one who speaks up. Good old Simon. He's the kind who's either in or out. He wants, he wants that place. He's bold. And this is what he says. Lord, to whom shall we go? He already knew it was go time. Did you get that? Lord, to whom shall we go? He knows that being a disciple, he's being sent out. They're being sent out. That they're going to have a mission to go. It wasn't just this easy life of following Jesus and just watching him do these wonderful miracles and feeding people and they get to be a part of it. It's, he, they're going to be sent. So Lord, whom sh to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have everything we need. You are enough and you are the everything. For we believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God. Just like Peter would later say, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's taken a stand with firm determination, convinced there is no other way. There's only one way. And that's with you, Jesus. And that's what resolve looks like. I did a wedding yesterday. Rachel Snyder and Adrian Centillion. What a what fun, fun wedding. I'm going to tell you it was fun. But they wanted for their wedding passage, Ruth chapter 1, verse 16, where Ruth tells her mother-in-law, not even a husband, but a mother-in-law. Don't tell me to turn back. I'm with you. I have firmly decided I'm going with you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I want to die. And where you're buried, I want to be buried. I'm with you and there's no turning back. That's the commitment of marriage. I told the story, of course, she went. She was blessed. She met Boaz. Boaz says, I want her. He paid the price as a kingsman redeemer. Wow. Obed was born. Jesse was born. who gave birth to David. And later on, here comes Jesus, the real kinsman redeemer. Wow. Because of her commitment... Because of her resolve, look what came out of her life. And this is what the Lord has been showing me more and more lately. It's how you finish is what counts. How you finish your life. At the, at the wedding was a picture of Rachel's brother, Bruin, who died tragically in a car accident. And he had gone through an issue with drugs and got clean. And here he is, this young man, and he's out witnessing to homeless people on the city streets of Hot Springs. There's a video of it on his phone that his dad found. He's, he's just loving people. He, he had been set free. And that's when the Lord took him home. He's living. He's going, you know. He was at a place where he's ready to go and to be with Jesus because he, he came to the realization he is the everything and he is worth everything. Lord, to whom shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. He's living exactly where he needs to be so he could go home. Sometimes the Lord draws people out early to save them from trouble later on. But it's how you finish. We had a funeral on Monday. Her name was Nancy Reiniger. Some of you may know her. I've known her 30 years, and she has had pain for 30 years. Back pain, her legs, she had poor circulation in her legs, and she also had COPD. 30 years, and yet all she would do was all about serving the Lord. How can I serve the Lord? Homeless ministry, prayer shawl ministry, help the Samaritans 
feet and Samaritan's men's ministry. Uh, formed a Bible study so people would come together and grow in their faith. And this is what she did. She wrote a letter, right? Oh, she's in the nursing home on hospice, and she's witnessing to a lady during a tornado drill. She said, how could you be so calm? She said, I know where I'm going. What's, there's no big deal. You know, I can go out like Elijah. But it doesn't matter. She witnesses to the nurses caring for her, and they're just sobbing, seeing someone with so much faith. Faith, faith, faith. Then she writes this letter to be read at her funeral. And she's still witnessing about Jesus. She finished well. Because she had a resolve in her life. She was fully determined. This is why I'm here. And this is what life is all about. It's about Jesus. It's about you and your kingdom. And for people coming to know your glory. And what it's all about. what all of scripture is there's two options and the Lord's saying I want you to come with me just come with me forget about all that stuff out there don't get confused just come with me I have what you need I will show you a life that is full and rich don't waver live resolute and watch what happens. So our take home today is this. As I resolve to follow Jesus, I can embrace the way into which he leads me. See, sometimes that's the most confusing thing. It's why do you have to do it this way, Lord? Why do I have to go to church? I'm, come on. How many have ever had, thought that, had that question sometime? Yeah. It's because his way is the best way. It don't always make sense. This is a hard teaching. The suffering produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope, and hope does not disappoint us. That we have gone through trials so that we find our faith as gold, so it's proved genuine on the day he comes again. There's things that don't make sense, but his way is always the right way, and we're determined to say, Lord, whatever you, your way is, that's the way I want it, whether it's hard or whether it's easy to follow and live out, because sometimes it will be easy. It's not always easy because we would take it for granted. But when you have to press through, you're saying in your spirit, it's worth it. He is worth it, and I will do it. Secondly, as I resolve to follow Jesus, I can embrace the truth into which he leads me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We'll get to the life in a minute. But the truth, when it's difficult to understand and when it's easy to understand, some things are above our, our intellect or our pay grade or our education or anything. It's just, it's just up there. But because you said it, I will do it. How many have ever had teenagers or no teenagers where you say, Clean your room. Why do I have to clean my room? I'm the only one that lives in there. What's the big deal? Why do I have to go to school? Why do I have to go to school today? Why can't I just miss today? Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Because parents know. And they're right even when they're wrong. It's okay. Because they determine truth. But he's determined truth. And when I am determined to just do what he says, we're going to be blessed. And sometimes it'll be easy. We'll get it. Husband, love your wives. As Christ loved the church. Because she begins to shine. She begins to feel secure. She begins to see herself the way that God sees her. And the husband gets to see what Christ did for us as well. Because he's the bridegroom, we're the bride. Thirdly, as I resolve to follow Jesus, I can embrace the life into which he leads me. Even if it's a life of suffering. That's what Moses did by faith. I'll suffer for Christ's sake. Because he suffered for me. 
far be it from me not to because of what he did for me. Far be it from me to not be willing when I receive everything, everything that's good comes through suffering and death and resurrection. To embrace the life of suffering, but many times of joy. I was at a wedding last night, and there was a lot of joy. The music was so loud. Because they like it that way. Because they want to dance. They want to celebrate. That's not just background. He came to give us fullness of life, joy in the midst of life in this world. So it'll be both and. And we can embrace it, whatever it has for each of us. We don't know. We know he's prepared the good works in advance for us to walk in. We may not understand why, but he knows. And it's worth it to live resolved to walk in that way. So it's time. No more flip-flopping. I'm not talking about shoes. <laughs> I'm talking about him. I'm going that way. I'm with him. How about you? Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, amen. 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 I'm going to help you out with it. You know, living in resolve. Being like abiding in Christ. When we're not. When we're living in the world and we're dipping in and out or in and out, the world don't want us with them. Did y'all know that? When we are dipping in and out and we're over here worshiping God and we're like the Israelites in that cycle. And we're here, we're worshiping God. We have his presence on us and we represent him and then we come back into the world and we try to fit in with them it messes up their mojo see they living for the world and when we bring some of Jesus in there with us they don't like that so you're not really we're not liked by the world when we're dipping in and out they really don't want us so sin can continue to run rampant. But over here, if we abide in Christ, in that resolve, we're in everything that he has for us, all the goodness, everything that we need in life is over here in the resolve when we are abiding in Christ. But when we dip in back and forth, in and out, when we're over here, we're out of the will of God. And if we're out of the will of God, then have you noticed that when being a Christian, it, when things go wrong and you're outside of the will of God, they always point the finger at the Christian. Things always go wrong with the Christian. I wonder why. Because we're on the enemy's playground. He don't want us over there. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But living in the resolve over here, Christ said, I came that you might have life and life to the fullest. That's what he wants from us. He said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for you to do good to succeed in life and have a future. Just living in his resolve. And guess what? We don't have to do any work. We just have to obey. He's done the work. 
on Calvary. We just have to rest in him. Amen. You know, we're going to pray for the church. And Pastor, I hope this is okay. But here at First Lutheran, you know, we have a school here, right? And we got sweet Miss Tammy here. And we are the body of Christ, man. The school, all of us, we represent him. And Tammy, if you don't mind, could you come forth and Pastor John? Um, I want you to stand in the gap for your school. And she spoke with me. She have a big project tomorrow. And you know, guys, their school is just starting, man. And it's an out-of-the-box thing, and guess what? We are part of it. God is showing up, and we are a part of it. So those of you that, as we get ready and pray for the church, want to come and support Tammy, because I know she's nervous about tomorrow morning. But God got her back. God got this, this school. God is in control. Come on up, daughter. Pastor preaching about resolve. Pastor, I'm going to tell you this little girl right here. Listen to everything you said. 14 years old, taking notes of the sermon. Remain in that resolve. Don't let nothing steer you from that. 14 years old, you paying attention to the word of God like that? My God. So, Tammy, pastor, just bless us, the school, pray for us. And All right. Lord yes. Jesus, we know this is a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. um, we don't manufacture. You open the door, and that's what you've done for all Children's Academy to be here, for Tammy to be here, and her daughter to be here today. You're moving to draw us together to build each other up in that most holy faith, to strengthen yes, and encourage for the issues before us. Mm -hmm to let go of the issues behind us, to walk in the fullness of life that you have. We ask your blessing over all the children who come mm -hmm. to this place, all Children's Academy, and for the teachers. They have a joy in the, in the ministry and in the service they do as they pour into the little ones, you, and the life that is yours in this world that you have made. So bless them and keep them. Lord, we want to be available for all that you have for all of us to pour into people around us. That your goodness and your love and your grace just spills out because we have been so receiving your life, your love, your power, your presence, and that we're carriers of your glory. So Lord Jesus, do what you do. Our eyes are fixed on you. And we trust in you. We believe and we know who you are and how you work. And we are trusting in you. So we give you glory and praise in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us stand. Let us pray for the church. God bless you. Eternal God, we just, we thank you for the word today. Living in the resolve. Father, we can't do it on our own, but with the power of your Holy Spirit, we can live in this resolve to abide in you wherever you lead us, Father. We are willing to follow. Whatever you have us to say, Father, we are willing to say. So help us, Lord, as a church, as a body of Christ, to not grow weary in well-doing. That we keep our eyes fixed on you in everything that we do, Lord. That we be a church, Father, that be unified, that represents you in everything that we do. That when people see us, they will see that we're living in, in you, living in that resolve as we carry your joy, your peace, your love, everywhere we go, in our homes, on our jobs, in our communities, that we are spreading your word, either by our words, by our actions, by our time. The Father, help us as we're in our communities, Father. May we be those great ambassadors that you have 
called us to be. Now, Father, we pray for this world that we live in, Father. Let us be a church, Father, that be that light that's sitting on a hill, the sun and light, bright light in such a dark land. When people are looking for answers, that they can come to us and we can point them to you. Now, Father, we pray for all those that are hurting, those who need your healing touch, Father. We just pray that you cap out your angels around them, touch the doctors, the nurses, everyone that's taking care of them. Give them your peace. Heal their bodies, Father. Now, Father, we close out with the prayer that you taught us to pray, and that prayer is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I pray that the Lord spoke to you in today's message about the kind of relationship it really takes in following Jesus. That when things get hard, we don't just walk away, uh, but we stay with Jesus knowing that he has the words of eternal life and we're ready to go wherever he wants to send us. If we can be a blessing to you on this journey, give us a call. Our number is 501-525-0322. We'd love to talk and pray and encourage. Uh, anything else we could do, we want to be there for you. Also, I invite you to join us on Facebook Live or on Sunday morning at 8.30 and 11 a.m. Central Time here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. And uh, you can all see all the other things that are going on. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.